Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. We're getting close to the finishing process on this guy. So in our last video, we widened out this route for a humbucker, which means that we're going to put a pickup ring there instead of a pick guard. I can't direct mount the pickup because of the way that this hole was set up initially. So that's not really an option. We're going to have to go with the pickup ring, which is fine. Uh, I like direct mounted how it looks and everything, but really when all's said and done, it's going to look cool anyway. So today we have to fill all of the holes for the pick guard because we don't need that anymore. So yeah, step one, we're going to fill the holes for the pick guard and then we are going to get into the finish sanding process. I also have to finish off this belly carve. We did all of this by hand last time, but I want to, you know, I want to deepen it a little bit and that's, you know, something you can do by hand, no problem. That's what I wanted to show you was how to do it by hand, but yeah, I want to add a little something to it and I think it's going to be easier for me to do that with power tools. I'm going to do a lot of this sanding with power tools um, just because it's faster, but you all know how to sand by hand. We'll cover it very, very quickly along the way. So, Let's get started. All right, so for the sake of being careful, let's make sure we know what we're filling here. We've got our bridge and our control plate here. We don't want to fill any of those holes. Our pick guard hits these spots. Most of these are pretty obvious, but so we do, we do want to fill this guy and this guy. We definitely don't want to catch this hole right here. I don't know if you can actually see that. Let's bring it in a little closer even. Okay, so that guy and that guy for the controls. The bridge gets held down with these four screws exclusively. We don't have mounting holes yet for our pickup ring. So we've got to fill all of these. The other thing we need to do is one of the pick guard holes is right there. I want to get a little bit of filler in there as well, just in case. Now the base for my finish work on this is going to be white when all is said and done. So I'm going to use poly filler for this instead of wood filler. First of all, it dries pretty quickly and second, it goes on white. Should be pretty simple. All right, so for starters here, I wanna make sure that everything is nice and smooth. So I'm gonna take my razor blade. I know that takes the pencil off, but it gets that nice and smooth and makes sure that there's no wood burrs over top of it. Okay, so now I know that I've got a flat surface to fill and I'm gonna do that with all of them. Now this razor blade is close to new, but not quite new. So I'm also gonna use it for the filling portion. So I make sure I've got a nice flat item to fill. I needed this a little bit, like not needed it, like needed it, like massaged it like bread. Okay, so I put some filler on there, push it down, get rid of the excess. Unfortunately, it's a little bit cold in this garage, so hopefully that doesn't mess things up too much. All right, so I'm trying to get these filled up and make sure that I pull off as much of the excess as I can so I'm not left with a big mess of filler because I'm not trying to grain fill right now. I'm just trying to fill the holes. All right, so that's our first round of filling on those holes complete. We're gonna let that dry now. Probably have to do it again. It will likely shrink a little bit and then we can go in and sand. This got three rounds of filler. It's looking good now. It's had some time to dry, probably not as much as it maybe should, but some time. Uh, the areas where I went in with that razor blade and scraped are obviously very smooth. The rest of it still pretty rough because it's had that coat of sealer to raise the grain. So we're gonna move on to some Sanding, sanding now, some finished sanding. I'm gonna use a combination of power tools and hand sanding like I told you. Um, when I recently did the video on this belly carve, which isn't, isn't super deep uh, yet, <laughs> I said that I would finish it off with the orbital sander when doing the orbital sanding portion of this. I'm going to, but I'm also gonna demonstrate one other power tool. It's gonna to be an oscillating multi-tool, which is something I don't know if a lot of you have one. Uh, it's something very commonly used for renovations and whatnot, so it's a very versatile and useful tool, and I think it's something that maybe a bunch of you might have. So I'm going to use it to kind of speed up 
the process a little bit and demonstrate kind of how that's going to work on here. And then we'll go in with the orbital sander after. So you can obviously just do this as deep as you want by hand, or you can work on it more with the orbital sander if you don't have the oscillating tool. But it's just to demonstrate another technique and I won't be, I won't spend long on it. So let's get this guy clamped back onto our table, finish off the belly carve, and then get some finished sanding done. So there we go, we've got this thing hand sanded now to a beautiful 600 grit. Uh, yeah, should be good, about ready for finish. We'll have to do the same thing on the neck, but we'll save that for another video. I should note that the binding on this is a one ply plastic. So of course, in sanding it, I've, I've scuffed it up as well, so it looks kind of gray now. It is black, obviously, um, but we will rectify that once we've got our finish on here, we'll scrape the binding back clean. That's how I'm gonna deal with it. I'm not gonna tape it. And when we put our clear coat on, that's gonna come back to life and be a nice deep black again. So don't worry about that. I'm gonna keep thinking about what I wanna do for a finish on this. Join me next time when we either start the finishing process on this guy or get to work getting that, uh, the neck's over there, that's why I did that. Get to work getting that neck finished sanded as well so we can start the finishing process for that one, which is also gonna be pretty cool. So, as always, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please find a way to convince yourself to give it a thumbs up so that Solo Music Gear will, you know, think I'm doing a good job and probably send me some more of these or something. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. I'll see you next time.